My name is Urban Johnson. I'm executive director of an international company with the name The Owls. It's a consultancy company for uh, democracy, justice, and human rights. And I'm going today to talk about human rights urbanization for cities with rights. Let me first start to talk about human rights. And let me first be very clear that origin and meaning are two different things. I start with the origin, and the origin has a moral and a legal background, and I start with the morality. The moral origin of human rights is well known, but I just want to focus on what I think is the most fascinating moral background, namely the different religions. It's fascinating to see something that we call the golden rule exist in all big religions. Let me just rapidly say a few words about that. In Buddhism, for example, and I take now the basic text of the religions, not the interpretations. Hurt not others in ways that you yourself would find hurtful. In Christianity, do unto others as you would have done unto you. In Hinduism, do not to others if done to thee would cause thee pain. This is the sum of duty. In Islam, no one of you is a believer until he desires for his brother that which he desires for himself. And Judaism, finally, what is hateful to you, do not to your fellow man, that is the entire law, all the rest is commentary. How is this possible? I've discussed this over the years, and I've come to the conclusion that it's simply a result of individual human beings have a humanitarian instinct. Children are born good, with good values and instinct. These texts were not written with connection of internet and letters. They come from different cultures and two and a half thousand years in between them. So the legal origin of human rights is much easier. That is really the United Nations. And the pillar of the United Nations in the Charter is peace, justice, freedom, and human rights. But even more important, in the Universal Declaration, human rights is identified as the necessary condition for peace, justice, and freedom. So in that sense, the United Nations is a fundamentally human rights-based organization. The two covenants that we talk about, the civil, political covenant, and the economic, social, and cultural rights, these are dividing the different rights in these two categories. Today, we don't see this division. Civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights are all of equal value. Let me go to the meaning of human rights. In a very simple language, human rights is, of course, those things that ought to be done to everybody and those things that ought not to be done to anybody. If we make it a little bit more complicated, the human rights is a relationship between someone who has a valid right, a valid claim, is the subject of the right, a claim on others who become the correlative duty bearers. The subject and the object of a right expresses a relationship. For example, we know that a school child has a right to education, and teachers have a correlative duty to provide good education. That's a simple claim duty or right duty relationship between the two. Different types of human rights duties. The duty bearer, the one who has or those who have the duty to act in relationship to somebody who has a valid claim through a right. It's a and this is very important for governments. The duty to respect, to protect, to facilitate and provide. The duty to respect is simply that the government avoids of taking actions that makes, creates problems for the individual. For example, states should refrain from carrying out forced evictions, denying security of tenure to particular groups, or denying restitution to particular groups. The obligation or duty to protect in the same thing, ensure that private actors comply with human rights standards related to the right of adequate housing, inclusive, inclusive regulating the housing and rent market. That is, that third parties should be stopped, should be hindered, to do something bad regarding rights realization. Now, facilitate and provide, that is for those who don't have the right realized, 
in the housing sector, it would be that the government has a duty to facilitate by adopting a national housing policy, national housing plan, with a focus on disadvantage or marginalized groups. An obligation to provide fundally, that is, prevent and address homelessness, provide the physical infrastructure required for housing, and provide housing subsidies and step, stop all illegal forced eviction. Let me move now into the center of my presentation, a human rights-based approach to development. And let me start with saying something about development. There are many different opinions of what development is. <clears throat> but all I have talked in my lifetime agree that whatever development we talk about requires two things. It must be achieving a desirable outcome. And we know that if an outcome takes place, there is a process behind. And of course, sometimes we have an outcome focus and it goes down. Sometimes we have a process focus. But ideally, we should have a simultaneous process of development that increases the desirable outcome through a stronger and stronger process. Now, if we then move into human rights, it's all very simple. Human rights consist of standards and principles. Standards is access to health services, education, food, housing. Principles is equality, non-discrimination, participation, inclusion, accountability, and the rule of law. If we now say that the human rights standard dictates the desirable outcome, and we associate human rights principle to the quality of the process. We have an ideal situation where you can see how the outcome, human rights standards, ed education, primary education, health, and what donors, MDGs, all the MDGs except number eight, donors call it results. And the process must be characterized by the six human rights principles that I just mentioned. And now, finally, we are ready to use this new construct of outcome and process for the subject of today, a human rights-based approach to urbanization for sustainable human development. If you look into the outcome process, we can easily agree that the outcome must be the city, city with rights. The city should meet human rights standards codified in any of the human rights treaties ratified by the country in which we are. By the process leading to this city, the urbanization should adhere to the human rights principles of equality and non-discrimination, inclusion and participation, accountability, and the rule of law. And we can then see in the outcome process now how urban development, or rather the city with rights, is the desired outcome, a result of the urbanization process. So my conclusion is that it is not either a well-designed and implemented urbanization or a city with rights realized. It's both a good process and a desirable outcome. Or even more, it is about the achievement of a city with rights through an urbanization process satisfying human rights principles. Thank you.